Hello friends and welcome back to my tiny kitchen. I am Quintana here with another fun recipe to share with you. Um, it is finally cooling down here in Southern California, thank the gods. So I wanted to do kind of like a comfort food recipe and it has a lot more steps than what my normal recipes have, but it's worth it, I promise, and it's so delicious. It is shepherd's pie. Or at least I'm calling it shepherd's pie. I know it's probably not a proper shepherd's pie, but get off my back, okay? It's still delicious. So let's get started. All right, so this is a recipe that I got online from Melissa D. Arabian, who I think she was like on uh, the next Food Network star. Um, but it's a great recipe that I kind of use as a base and then make it my own. So uh, the parade of ingredients, we're gonna start with the topping, the garlicky potato topping. So yummy. So on to the ingredients. Okay, of course you cannot have a shepherd's pie without potatoes. So we are going to use four large russet potatoes that I'm going to uh, peel and rough chop and then we're going to boil. The next ingredient, and this is where I can get down with Melissa, she calls for 10 garlic cloves, whole peeled, uh, but you know, I'm gonna cut them and get that green stem out. And you know, I just had to do it up. My Mayan number is 11, so I have 11 garlic cloves. Again, use as much or as little as you'd like. And where she uses a half cup of sour cream, I like to use a half cup of Greek yogurt. The next ingredient, she uses a quarter cup to a half cup of beef broth, but I don't like my potatoes that liquidy. So I'm going to use instead a half teaspoon of beef bouillon and then add a little bit of water if needed. Then we're going to use four tablespoons of butter. Uh, I use unsalted because you can salt it to your taste. And I'm also going to leave this butter out so it gets a little soft. And finally, salt and pepper to taste. So now we are going to peel the potatoes, rough chop them, and get them boiling. Okay, before we move on to the parade of ingredients for the filling, we're going to heat your oven to 350 degrees and you're gonna prepare your dish. Um, now, Melissa's dish called for a 10 inch round baking dish, but I really like this one. I think it's really pretty and so I use my oval dish. And you can spray it with nonstick cooking spray. I actually took the butter wrapper from the butter that I used and just wiped it all around. So prepare your dish and preheat your oven to 350. All right, so here are our potatoes. They are ready to be pureed. I guess not pureed, but I'm going to use an immersion blender because it gets them really nice and soft and delicious. So um, let's, uh, let's get to it. We're gonna put all the ingredients in here and get to blending. All right, so now we're gonna cover these and we are going to set them aside. All right, now on to the parade of ingredients for the filling. First off, we are going to start with one tablespoon each of bacon grease for the flavor, trust me, and a tablespoon of vegetable oil. Next, we have one medium onion diced. And then of course we have one pound of delicious organic ground beef followed by two carrots, diced. Then I have about a half cup, between a half cup and three quarter cup of frozen peas that we're gonna let thaw. And of course we can't forget the garlic. Here I have five cloves uh, chopped, minced. So we're gonna use two tablespoons of tomato paste, one tablespoon of all-purpose flour, 12 ounces of your favorite beer. I like to use my favorite dark beer. You can see, woo hoo hoo. One half cup of beef broth, between like one and two teaspoons of fresh chopped rosemary leaves. 
smells so good. And then we're also going to use salt and pepper, a little pinch of sugar, and we're going to top it with a half cup of shredded cheddar cheese and parsley. Okay, first things first, we are heating up our skillet on a medium heat, and then we're gonna add our bacon grease and vegetable oil. I'm gonna let that melt down. All right, once it's melted down, we're going to add our lovely diced onions. It already smells so good. And we're just going to let them brown for about 10 minutes. Cook them brown for about 10 minutes. All right, so now you can see they're getting browned on the edges. Yummy, yummy. And now is when we're going to use a pinch of sugar. I actually use um, monk fruit sugar. This is going to help it get brown and caramelized. So sprinkle in your sugar, a good pinch. And we're going to stir it around for about you know, three or four minutes or so. And they're going to get nice and caramelized. All right, look at that. We've got beautiful caramelized onions. And now it's time to add a little bit yeah, baby. We're just going to add the cheese and get it all incorporated until it browns. Now we have our beautiful brown brown peas mixed with the delicious caramelized onions. And now it's time to add the carrots, the peas, and the garlic. Get this party started. And we're going to let these ingredients get all happy together until they get soft and delicious. This is about five minutes. Mmm, nothing for that so It's time for the next ingredient to go into the party. Uh, we've got our tomato paste right in there and the flour. Let's stir that all up so it's all well blended together. Now it's time to really get the party started because we're going to add our beer and bring it to a boil. Ooh. You can scrape up all those delicious brown bits on the bottom. Flavor, flavor, flavor. So we're going to do that, scrape up all the bottom, and then you're going to bring it to a boil and let it boil for about three minutes. Ooh, look how beautiful that already looks. 
delicious. We'll just stir it around a little bit before we add our next ingredients. It's going to be the broth and the rosemary. All right, let's get that broth in there. And mix the rosemary. And of course, we have to add a little seasoning, so we're going to add a little salt. We're going to bring this to a boil and uh, let it boil for a couple minutes. And then I'm going to reduce the heat and let it simmer uncovered for about 15 minutes. Oh my gosh, I wish you could smell this. It's really crazy how good it smells. All right, so I'm gonna bring this up to a boil and then I'm gonna take it down to a simmer for 15 minutes uncovered. All right, we got our greased dish ready to be filled with the delicious filling. So let's get to filling. I'm really, really very upset that it is 2020 and we do not have smell-o-vision because it smells so good. And then our next fun task is putting the potatoes on top. Remember, it doesn't have to be pretty because it's going to taste delicious, even though I think it is pretty. Now we're going to pop this into the oven, uh, our 350 degree oven, for about 35 minutes until the filling is like bubbly and the potatoes are browned. And then I'll tell you what we're going to do the next step. Oh my gosh, you guys, look at that still bubbling just out of the oven. It's ready for our final step, which is the cheese. I know I said a half cup of uh, shredded cheddar. You can also use uh, shredded Swiss if you'd like. Uh, I chose cheddar, but also you don't have to use a half cup. Use as much cheese as you like. So we're just going to sprinkle it over the top. Now that we have the cheese on top, we're going to put it back in the oven for about 10 minutes. Once again, bubbling from the oven. So delicious. Look at all that yummy melty cheese and the sauce and the potatoes underneath. Oh my gosh. And like I said before, I know this isn't probably proper shepherd's pie, but that's what Melissa called it. That's what I'm calling it. It's going to taste delicious regardless. Now all we have to do is top it with some parsley and onto the taste test with our favorite taste tester. Oh, could you just eat it all? All right, there's our serving. How delicious does that look? It's time for the taste test by both your and my favorite taste tester, Dan. Oh yeah, that's very yummy. It's like mashed potatoes and meat and delicious seasoning. It's chewy and delicious. I could eat all of this. Okay. I, mean, I could eat the entire thing. Really quick, let's see your shirt. What a wonderful design that is. And if you guys want to buy this or other designs, go to artfrombeyond.threadless.com. There's the artist. We did it, shepherd's pie. So delicious, a little more involved than the other recipes, yes, but very well worth it the perfect comfort food. Thank you so much for coming back to my tiny kitchen. Let me know if you try to make this recipe, send me the pictures, you know how much I love to see that. Uh, let me know if there's another recipe you'd like me to try, I'd love to try it. Thank you for showering our taste tester, Dan, with all of your love. If you liked his shirt, make sure to check out his shop at Art From Beyond, all one word, 
www.threadless.com, put the link down here. Um, he has tons of amazing designs and you can have a plethora of items that you can put your designs on. Well worth the visit. And also thank you for coming back and visiting me. I hope you come back next week where we'll have another fun recipe to share. Until then, like, subscribe, tell your friends, spread the word, and I'll see you next time.